Hello, welcome. Thank you all so much for joining me here. My name is Charity and this message is for Scorpio. So this is going to be a you and them love reading. I'll have your cards on one side and your person's cards on the other. This could be somebody specifically on your mind, somebody connected to or coming towards you depending upon your situation. For the main cards of the reading, I'll be using the Mystical Manga Tarot and the Fortune Telling Tarot deck by Yoshitaka Amano. If clarifiers are needed, the Anime Tarot. And I am recording this message for the energies of October, but I do ask these readings to be timeless and give you something you need to hear when you need to hear it. So let's get started. Spirit, what is the heart of the matter? What is Scorpio thinking overall about this connection or potential connection right now? What are some things going on in the daily life could be affecting this? What is happening in the heart space? How are they feeling? How are they feeling about this person? What intentions do they have towards this connection? And what is a potential outcome in the near future whenever you are meant to hear this reading? Okay, that's a whole handful of cards. Let's see if we can just get one more. One more. Okay. Now let's get the cards for the person, person on Scorpio's mind, connected to or coming towards Scorpio. What are they thinking overall about this connection or potential connection? What are some things going on in the daily life could be effect affecting this? What is happening in their heart space? What intentions? What intentions do they have towards this connection? And what is a potential outcome in the near future for whenever you are meant to hear this message. One more, one more. Oh my goodness. Okay, we do have the Ace of Cups here on the bottom of the deck and I am seeing it on your side as well. Definitely could be the energies of falling for someone or just really opening up about what is going on in your heart, maybe talking about things. With this being on the bottom of the deck for your person, there could definitely be some feelings coming up. Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces energy here. For me, the bottom of the deck energies are the underlying energies that somebody is deeply aware of but maybe hasn't acted on yet. So somebody could be interested in you, falling towards you. For those looking for new, could definitely be meeting somebody and sometimes that ace of cups can be like that love at first sight kind of vibe and I know a lot of people don't necessarily believe in that I will say I've only fallen in love a few times in my life each time completely different but every time I knew the moment I saw them that they were going to be very special in my life I know I don't know if that's just because I'm psychic or because a lot of us really feel that and I think sometimes we almost deny that inner knowing but I love about Scorpio is that you guys listen, like you listen to your intuition. Every Scorpio I know, you know, it's like you do know. So very interesting that that came up. Um, heart of the matter, we have the Ace of Wands, strong Aries energy, Leo and Sagittarius can be significant here, but you could be very interested in somebody wanting to talk to them. I feel like with the Queen of Wands, it can be spontaneity, great conversation, can be very attracted to someone, could want to do something, say something, you know, to... Um, to let somebody know what's on your mind, how you feel. You could just be feeling very, you know, very interested. I feel like the Queen of Wands is very magnetic. Somebody could also be like thinking about you and seeing the, you in that light, like very drawn to you, can't get you off their mind. I feel like there could be an immediate spark with this person from the time you meet or the time you connect or reconnect. There's just something there. And I feel like it's, it's undeniable. And I do feel like this person is definitely thinking thinking about, you know, thinking about you, obviously, with that energy and some of the other things I'm seeing over here. But on the heart of the matter, they've got the Eight of Cups. Pisces energy can be significant. The Eight of Cups is the energy of somebody who is making some decisions. They're deciding what's important. It comes right after the Seven of Cups. And the Seven of Cups is somebody who's pulled this way and that, not sure what to do, you know, has all these options. But the Eight of Cups is when they decide, you know what, I know what matters most and that's what I've got to pursue. And it's that it's that process of releasing things that just don't feel right so that you can go within. In the traditional card, the person is heading towards the moon and they are looking for their ninth cup, you know, the wish fulfillment, the 10th cup, the happy lasting connection. There's something about this person, you know, could be a little bit quiet. Sometimes this card is when somebody goes within to kind of make some decisions and sort some things out. But it is somebody who is kind of going through the process of deciding, you know, it's time to listen to 
their heart. It's time to choose what to focus on and what is most important. I have to say with the energies of what is coming up and showing up here, I think it's definitely you that is on this person's mind. But let's go ahead and see. But in some cases, that can be somebody who's like pulled away or gotten quiet or something like that. Or maybe maybe you did. Uh, obviously, you're all in very different situations. I just had a tower just fly out here. And it's interesting it landed sideways. I don't know if you guys could even really see the way that that went. Um, I don't know. Something went down between the two of you. More Aries and Scorpio energy here. Um but with this tower, especially with the way that it's sideways, you know, if something happened, if there was a miscommunication, if somebody went in a different direction, I do feel like this person could be more shaken up than they're letting on. I also feel like it's like almost like they don't want to let go or they don't want to release or they're kind of, you know, recovering from that process, whatever it was. And even though it's been difficult, I feel like the tower is always important because it's really just clearing out something karmic, something that no longer serves. In fact, this person could be walking away from some sort of karmic situation um, in order to really pursue what matters most. And we got an empress and emperor over here. So I do feel like there's definitely this sense that the two of you have something. Maybe there are some things being cleared out in their life. Um, on the bottom of the deck, they've got the sun. And I also see the sun showing up here in the outcome as well. Whatever the challenge was, whatever the difficulty, whatever has just thrown them for a loop with the tower, it is bringing happiness. And I feel like this person, you know, even if they've been quiet or even if they've been dealing with like a lot, a lot of chaos or things in their life, I feel like when they think about you, there's happiness. Something feels right. And um, I think you pick up on that energy as well. In your daily life, you've got a king of wands. So <laughs> Just starting off here with the King of Wands and the Queen of Wands, strong Sagittarius energy here, Leo and Aries as well with all this fire, but honestly, instant chemistry, instant attraction, you know, this could be two people that just talk and could just talk for hours and like it's all about taking initiative, taking action. The fact that the King of Wands is showing up in your daily life, you really could just be like taking charge of some things, sorting out some things. I do see you like clearing out some things to make some room as well. Maybe both you and this person are doing that. But with the King of Wands, you know, being also how you feel about this person, you could see them as somebody, you know, who's attractive, charismatic, creative. Sometimes it can be a leader, authority figure type, something like that. It's somebody who takes initiative, takes action. When they make a decision, they just go for it. You could be kind of like in this energy or you could also be seeing that person. But I do feel like, you know, there is this mutual attraction. With all this fire, though, on your side, I do feel like this person is kind of seeing that and also like extremely drawn to you, like extremely drawn to you. And maybe that's what's been so chaotic. Maybe there has been some sort of situation where, you know, they don't know if it's right to come together and yet they can't, you know, they can't help the fact that they're drawn to you. In their daily life, they've got a three of pentacles. There is mirroring energy all over the place. Like I keep, we keep getting like two of certain cards and you do have a three of pentacles on your side as well that three of pentacles can be an energy of something you know professional somebody that you see around at work somebody you're friends with have things in common with things like that at a class the gym like I always get that vibe from the three of pentacles but it doesn't have to be but ultimately, it is somebody that sees your value, somebody that feels like, you know, they want to spend more time with you. They want to get to know you. They want to be around you more face to face. Pentacles are all about tangible things. With this showing up in their daily life, there could be a real, you know, focus on work. When you get pentacles in the daily life, somebody could be throwing themselves into their work. If they are going through some something chaotic or some sort of change, they could even just be like burying themselves in work just to like cope and not think too much. Obviously, it's not the case for everyone, but but I know there are people that it's like when they can't deal with going, what's going on in their heart, they just like throw themselves into their work. And I almost get that vibe here. But um, but whatever, you know, whatever is going on, I just think this person, you know, they can't help but think about you. And the more they're around you, the more they think about you, the more that they know they want to be around you. In your heart space, you've got the emperor. Aries energy here, but once again, like this is definitely an energy of taking charge, taking initiative, feeling confident, you know, feeling sure, knowing who you are, knowing what you want. I don't know if you guys are just like 
taking, you know, taking control in your lives and really making some things happen with all this, all this energy that we have going on here. There's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of fire, but with this also being in your heart space could definitely be how, you know, you're feeling about the person. And for me, the emperor, empress energy are two people that when they meet, there's just something, something, you know, something that stands out above and beyond any connection. You know, you met this person for a reason, you know, you're going to be different for knowing them. You, for some of you, if you're calling in new, you could be holding this kind of energy in your heart and letting the universe know, you know, it's got to be it or nothing. I'm ready for the real thing. But for many of you, you could have somebody very specific on your mind and I feel like, you know, they are seeing you in the same light because we have an empress over on their side. So whether or not you guys have talked about it, even if there are challenges, I feel like both of you are seeing each other as somebody, you know, that um, that could be much, much more important every day, like every day you're around one another. In your person's heart space, we've got the Queen of Pentacles, strong Capricorn, Virgo and Taurus as well. But with this being how they are specifically feeling in their heart space about you, for me, this is that kind of person that you, you just... You want to be with them. You admire them. You see their value. You want to bring them into your world. You want to introduce them to your friends and family. You want them to come in and come in to stay. Like they could admire you. They could feel like you really have it together. For me, this is the kind of person you get serious with. Could even marry like that kind of energy. And I know, you know, every single person watching this video is dealing with something different. Some of you haven't met your person. Some of you have newly met somebody, you know. Some of you are in little to no contact or somebody you have, some of you have somebody that's been in your world for you know a bit and you're just curious what's really going on so I know you're all coming from different perspectives but when this energy shows up in the heart of the person that is coming towards you or thinking about you they are feeling like you know you could definitely be that person that person they could be happy with that person that they just want to be around more and more somebody they admire and it's a connection they want to you know really embrace and nurture and explore further it's something that they feel could be very you know very stable and lasting now interesting in your intentions you've got a king of swords your person has a knight of swords aquarius and gemini of course libra as well with all this air but there is this sense i feel like that both of you because this is mental energy are thinking about each other quite a lot, maybe way more than the either of you realizes. The King of Swords, though, we'll talk about for a little bit, is very much in keeping with all this energy. Like, I don't even know if I've ever gotten so much, like, really confident, really focused, really dedicated energy coming through in a reading. But I, don't, I feel like you have, you know, decided what it is that you want. You're setting your intentions. You're getting very clear. And if you aren't feeling very clear and very sure about things as we get into October, that could be shifting because this king has, you know, integrity, honesty, focus. This is, you know, aligned with divine and setting intentions and knowing what you're about. And with this king of swords, you know, you could be wanting to communicate something or you could just be thinking and feeling something that is absolutely crystal clear, like, you know, beyond a shadow of a doubt. I do feel like, you know, with this energy, sometimes this can be a little bit more of a guarded king, like they, somebody who focuses more on love and being sensible than really showing what they're feeling. But it could be that you're just thinking, you know, thinking things through, processing, trying to decide a little bit more, maybe before you show your heart. It's like you want to be smart. You want to be, you know, you want to be clear about things. For your person, as we said, we've got the Knight of Swords, fast moving energy. The swords are fast because their thoughts and thoughts move very quickly. And the Knight of Swords, we say, you know, can kind of like rush in without really thinking or without really paying attention, sometimes going to a good place, sometimes not so good, but that's how our thoughts are. It's like we have to pay attention to where they're going because we're creating our life with our thoughts. We're attracting things. We're making our decisions. This is somebody who's thinking about you so much. It's almost like, you know, there's like this reckless sense to it, almost like, I don't care what happens. I don't care what I do. I just, I just can't stop thinking, you know, about Scorpio. I've got to do something. I got to say something like there's this kind of anxious, you know, anxious energy here. Let's go ahead and see what that is all about. But it's paired. I mean, I do have to say, 
I would be a little worried about this Knight of Swords if it wasn't sitting right here next to an Empress. It is paired with an Empress energy, so it feels like the reason this person can't stop thinking about you is because they're really beginning to realize you could absolutely be the one. Spirit, why do we have the Knight of Swords? Why do we have the Knight of Swords? Two of Swords, and I don't know if you guys could see that. I almost tried to catch it. A card just fell out, and... I saw what it was right as it was falling out. It is the emperor energy. We got the emperor and the empress sitting right next to one another. You're holding the emperor in your heart space here, feeling like somebody really could be it. And honestly, this person can't stop thinking about you because this could be a significant and powerful connection. I mean, there is no denying that. Just the way that Emperor just jumped out there, it was paired with a Two of Swords. So somebody can't stop thinking about you, but they're definitely struggling with a little bit of indecision. Their heart and their head aren't quite agreeing right now. The Two of Swords is when it's time to make a heart overhead decision and somebody's guarded. I feel like they are guarded because clearly whether this happened between the two of you or this is something else that happened in their past, they face some towers. They could be worried that, you know, if they move too fast or if they say too much, they could end up right back, you know, upside down again, like in that tower energy. And yet, you know, it's clear their mind is on you. They're trying to be smart. They're trying to be logical, but they're struggling. You know, they're struggling to just keep their like wits about them and not just, you know, go for it from the heart because this is a significant connection. I like this. These cards are new. I'm having fun. I'm having fun getting to see them. I think this is the first time the Emperor has come out from this deck. Maybe. I'm not sure. But um, it's the first time it's really been drawn to my attention. But I do feel like with this energy... You know, both of you know about this. Both of you are aware in this sense. You wouldn't have the emperor showing up on both sides. It could be this person kind of finding this energy, finding their confidence. And maybe, you know, with the two of swords, they are, oh, and Libra energy, if I didn't mention it. They are maybe undecided, you know, trying to be smart and logical because maybe they are still like working on coming into this, this confident energy, this sure kind of determined energy. They could still be a little bit wobbly because of whatever that tower was but there's something about this connection something about their feelings for you that is changing things up now in our potential outcome we have the three of pentacles the death and the ace of cups now if this wasn't a scorpio reading i might be a little worried about this death energy but you guys understand this energy you know that it's ruled by pluto it's all about transformation death and rebirth the powerful release of things that no longer serve to make space look at this for what really matters, for what feels right. And I also see that as your energy, as your universe confirming, you know, that um, that this is definitely, definitely a message for Scorpio because we got the major icon of Scorpio sitting right here in the middle of it. But I also feel like what's kind of going on here and... Um, I'll go ahead and say the signs, Capricorn, Scorpio, Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces. It feels like with this death energy sitting right between this three of pentacles and an ace of cups, you might be coming to the end of this casual, friendly, or professional, or more lighthearted aspect of a connection and diving in to the emotions into the feelings like that's a very literal translation of these three cards together but it feels almost as if you know if you're gonna dive in if you're gonna explore this love if you're gonna explore this undeniable connection that I think both of you you know are feeling here it's almost like there has to be a release of this you know like, oh, well, we're just work friends or it's just professional or, you know, or things are just, you know, just like this. It's like you're, you've got to be ready to take like a deep dive into what this can be. So that is the case in some. In some cases, um, some of you have all this like determined, focused, kind of just dedicated energy because you're cleaning house. You're letting go. You're releasing things that just aren't right because... You're ready for an Ace of Cups. Your final card here is the Ace of Cups. So no matter what that death energy means, it is clearing space. 
It is clearing space for openness. It is clearing space for a new beginning. It is clearing space for genuine love. Now, Ace of Cups can be a new person, but for many of you, this is somebody that you know, and it is a new phase, a new beginning in this same connection. So keep that in mind. You have to take these how they resonate. For some of you, if you release something that just wasn't right, you know, maybe you just had like a friend or professional thing and it just dragged on and on and they were just hints and stuff and you're like, you know what? I'm not going to play these games. I'm going to let go. You clear space and meet somebody that's really ready to open their heart. But in many cases, it is almost like a transformation within this connection. Both of you having this recognition and the realization of what this really means, you know, to both of you and have to take that step, you know, opening your heart and really beginning to explore this. So your person's potential outcome, and I do apologize, I have to be so careful to cover up this Empress card or for YouTube community standards my videos will upload. So I have to be very careful. So I do apologize. It's such a pretty card. Um, but your person's potential outcome, two of pentacles, the sun, which we saw on the bottom of the deck earlier, and the empress. I feel like, you know, with the two of swords, there has been some indecision. There has been somebody who's been guarded. There has been somebody who's been struggling to listen to their heart. But with the two of pentacles, that is also about decisions. But that is about finding balance. That is about learning what is important. If somebody had thrown themselves into their work because they couldn't deal with what was going on in their heart, this is somebody realizing, you know what? I need to make more time for what matters. Make more time for love. Make more time for happiness. And as they're finding that balance with that two of pentacles, and I'll go ahead and do the signs, Capricorn, Leo, Taurus, Libra, if I didn't do them already. Um, as they make those decisions, as they find that this balance, look at these final cards. We have an empress, a sun, and an ace of cups here. It does feel like it's been a little bit of a journey. It does feel like it's been a little topsy-turvy. I mean, it feels like there have been ups and downs. There have been difficulties. You wouldn't have a tower. You wouldn't have a death card if there wasn't some intensity, if there weren't some challenges, if there weren't some total releases along the way to make space. But this is a new beginning. This is an offer of love. This is somebody coming forward from the heart because they feel like you are their person and you are their happiness. And I feel like they just, they don't want to be without you. They just want to be with you, Scorpio. I wouldn't end up with these beautiful major arcanas if that wasn't the case. So that is the message that I have for you. I do hope something in this reading spoke to everyone who was guided here. If you enjoyed the message, please feel like if you haven't subscribed. I would love if you would. My Patreon, where I'll be sharing a love reading for the new moon in Libra tomorrow, is in the description box, as well as my website for personal readings. Love you, Scorpio, and I'll talk to you soon.